What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 exact moments WWE wrestlers saved their jobs. Now, this should be a very interesting one. You know, you have those situations where a wrestler is about to get featured in Deppard, and maybe they're not getting over with you know the fans or maybe vince is not liking the matches they're having maybe they're having some backstage uh issues with uh some personnel who knows it could be a plethora of reasons why they may end up being on the chopping block but it's those instances where they find something where they they're able to come up with some type of gimmick or they're able to improve on their wrestling or they're able to you know make situations better in the back for them where they end up saving their job so it's going to be very interesting to see some of these instances where wrestlers were legit about to get fired but they were able to save their jobs doing whatever they needed to do to get it to get it done so we're going to check this out Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's get right into this bad boy. Fortunately, WWE firings are a natural part of the way they operate. Yep. However, from time to time, when WWE is getting set to fire someone, that talent can attempt to save their own skin. Mm -hmm. Either the wrestler manages to change the perception surrounding them, either in a ring or backstage, like or I that just wrestler said. has some popularity with top names in WWE, and that ultimately gives them one more chance at the big time. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 exact moments a WWE wrestlers save their job. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Subscribe to WrestleMania also, if you haven't channel, already. WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Stevie Richards. One of the most disappointing matches of the Invasion era saw Chronic take on seen the stories about this. destruction. The two teams would collide at the Unforgiven 2001 pay-per-view, and the match was so unbelievably bad that Chronic member Brian Clark was fired from WWE shortly after the pay-per-view mm -hmm. match. He was fired because he outright refused to go to WWE Developmental, whilst the other Chronic member Brian Adams accepted their request for a stint in the Developmental Territory. For Chronic's infamous run in 2001, they would be joined by Stevie Richards, and according to Richards during a shoot interview, he saved his own- Actually, it's crazy, because I think he has a YouTube channel now where he be, he be like, kind of talking about things that uh, he's experienced and, like, different things that's happened, and, like, happened- that has happened or is happening in the ring he'll he'll give his own opinions and critiques on certain things so he actually do have a youtube channel i've seen that so if you guys want me to check out uh you know some of the stuff that he be talking about on his youtube channel uh i definitely will man but i have seen his channel pop up on my uh my mention feed you know for me to check out so i hadn't yet so let me know if y'all be interested in that because i'm pretty sure he has plenty of things to talk about and on his insight within the actual wrestling biz and and what he went through job during the unforgiven match by calling an audible in the end we had to call that audible and i got in the ring i backed up to glenn and i did the old reaching behind and oh my god is he still behind me turned around beg off take the choke slam half decent take a bump I think that there might have saved my job in a way because I got in the ring and called that audible. Mm. They were kind of cool with it that we kind of saved a little bit of the match with that. Number 9, That's JBL. Dope. Whilst it was never confirmed that WWE were planning on firing JBL, by 2004 it was clear that the team of the APA had run its course. Uh -huh. Farouk was getting set to retire and this left JBL who was using the name of Bradshaw in a state of flux. Thankfully for JBL, he had a backup. In 2003, he became an author and would release his book titled, Have More Money Now. If they decided to fire the former tag team champion, JBL would have a backup. However, he would make the smart move in pitching the JBL persona to mm -hmm. WWE, and they absolutely loved it. Yeah. JBL would be instantly propelled into the main event scene, and within a few short months of this initial pitch, he would become WWE champion. Yeah. Number 8. Titus O'Neil. The wrestling world was in a state of shock following Daniel Bryan's initial retirement in 2016, but this wasn't the only story dominating the wrestling news at the time. As Bryan's statement came to a close, Titus O'Neil physically pulled Vince McMahon out of the way in order to let Stephanie McMahon pass. Vince was absolutely yeah, furious with O'Neil, and he was getting set to terminate O'Neil with immediate effect. Yeah, and I do remember this. Yep. The, that that story <laughs> it's crazy how vince was ready to fire him when he was just trying to you know let let his own daughter you know go through like he was trying to let vince's daughter get through and 
I don't know, Vince. I guess I had a bad day. Get your hands off me, pal. You know what, Titus? <laughs> Thankfully for O'Neill, he had built up a solid rapport with Triple H, and the game used his influence to convince Vince to reconsider. Whilst O'Neill was still suspended, the incident didn't negatively impact his standing within WWE. Number 7, That's crazy. Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss had emerged as one of the most successful call-ups from NXT, but at one point in time, it looked like Bliss was going to be fired from WWE. Now, this During is very Bliss's early days in WWE, she was failing to oh. get over, and she was ultimately failing to find a character that she was comfortable with. WWE were getting frustrated with her, and she was in contention to be fired. Damn. Something drastically changed for Bliss as she would join forces with Blake mm -hmm. and Murphy, and she adopted that. the version of the goddess persona that would be used on the main roster. The multi-time women's champion would discuss how she was almost fired during an appearance on the Not Sam podcast. From day one, I knew it was my sink or swim moment because in NXT, as a good guy, my character wasn't getting over. And when I was told about the pairing with Blake and Murphy, I knew there had to be a character change. Wednesday night, we had TakeOver and I pushed Enzo and helped him keep them as champions. Mm -hmm. I came the next day with new gear and different hair and I knew that if I didn't run with it, I probably wasn't going to have a job. Yep. Number six, and it worked Tyler out for Breeze. In 2015, ESPN Definitely worked debuted out for a special documentary that focused on NXT. The nature of the documentary was supposed to show major success of the NXT brand as well as notable failures. These failures were designed to show firings and one of those firings was going to be Tyler Breeze. A Breeze was smart enough to realize that he needed a new gimmick immediately. Mm -hmm. And this is where he decided to come up with the Tyler Breeze character which would go on to become one of the most successful gimmicks on the NXT brand. Discussing this on oral sessions with Rene Paquette, the former WWE star revealed, That E60 thing that we were doing was supposed to have a couple of guys who made it, a couple of guys who we didn't know, and a couple of guys who got fired. Me and Big Cass were supposed to be the two that got fired. During the time, I found Tyler Breeze and he found this thing with Enzo, and it completely 180'd and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, they were like, We can't fire these guys, yep. they're doing good now. He said that for the first time in front of everybody, and we went, Oh my god. The thing we were excited about, we were going to get fired. And at Damn. The end, we had no idea. That's Number wild five, when you find out, like, you're going to be featured on something. And then you're not even thinking you're about to get fired. And then they tell you as someone else is getting over, oh, we can't fire these guys. Wait, what? Y'all was going to fire us? Like, that's wild when you really think about it. Brock Lesnar. There's now, this is very interesting, too. In which Brock Lesnar is fired from WWE just months into his main roster run. Well, in an interview with Bill Aptor of Sports Key to Wrestling, WWE to Mark Henry, man. Wall of Famer Mark Henry talked about how an incident between him and Lesnar left Lesnar fearing for his job. According to Henry, he and Lesnar had a shoot match, and this resulted in Henry getting hurt. He shot from about six feet away and went to my ankle, and he put both hands behind my ankle and his shoulder in my knee and hyperextended Whoa. my knee, and I was out for like six to seven weeks. I was just on the ground like, oh my God. And he was like, you're hurt? And I was like, damn, I can't move. And he was like, he's like, they're going to fire me. I said, no, they're not going to fire you. They're going to fire me. And we were going to say that he and Lesnar were able to laugh it off. And Lesnar's insecurity in relation to his job likely came from his reputation at the time because he was infamous for being borderline reckless in the ring. Yeah, Mark Henry said it right. They're not going to fire you, bro. They're going to fire my ass for not telling you. <laughs> to ease up. Thankfully for Lesnar, the veteran spoke up for him as she wasn't doing anything with malicious intent and it probably helped that Lesnar had a fantastic attitude and this in turn probably helped save his job. Number yeah. 4. Seth Rollins During Seth Rollins' time in developmental, he didn't have the best reputation amongst WWE management. Rollins mm. was calling issues during training sessions and this led to Triple H pulling him aside and letting Rollins know that he had no issues with firing him. Thankfully for Rollins, Damn. he knew he had to change his attitude. and It was a deep conversation with Joey Mercury that influenced Rollins to change for good. Discussing this on Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast, Rollins stated, Hunter took me aside and was like, look, I don't see anything special in you. If you don't want to play ball and you don't want to work with us, you can go back to Ring of Honor and do things your way. But wow. you need to start doing things our way. I was like, oh man, my dream is about to go up in smoke here. I go back to Joey Mercury and sat down with him and he's like, you need to understand how to play the game. It doesn't mean that you have to change who you are, but you have to play a role all the time. You're not just when on when you want to be, you have to be on all the time. Damn. You have to find a way to give them what they want while teaching them how you do things. Mm -hmm. It's a compromise and you have to figure out how you do that. He sat me down and talked me through that whole process. Number three, wow. Batista. He's, Triple H said, I don't see nothing special in you at that time. That's wild. But 
once again, that's how it is in WWE. You can be this amazing, athletic, talented. You can flip over everything and do somersaults everywhere on the independent scene and, and be willing to put your body through all types of pain on the independent scene. But when you come to WWE, they want you to kind of look a certain way. They want you to kind of move a certain way. It's finding a way to keep your, your core self, but also, you know, like he said, kind of play ball, play within the system, but keep your originality as much as you possibly can. So that's very interesting that Triple H had to say, hey, man, you can get the boot easily, bro. Yeah. One of the wrestlers that is synonymous with the Ruthless Aggression era is Batista. Yeah, Batista was extremely close to being let go by WWE uh -huh, I before definitely he heard about a member this. of Evolution. Yep. During an interview with Chris Jericho on the Talk is Jericho podcast, Batista stated that the Deacon Batista gimmick wasn't working nope. and WWE were considering cutting ties with him. However, when Batista was handpicked to be a member of Evolution alongside mm -hmm. Triple H, Ric Flair and Randy Orton, everything changed. It saved Triple his, H and Flair his saw career in WWE. when it came to Batista and they were absolutely right as Batista were going to become one of the biggest and most successful names in WWE history. Fact. Number two, Becky Lynch. Even though Becky Lynch reached main event status on the main roster, her NXT run, particularly early on, wasn't exactly the standout portion of her this career. This is interesting Before too. Lynch I didn't appeared notice. on NXT TV, WWE trainers and officials had become frustrated with Lynch's lack of progress, and instead of repackaging her, they were planning on letting her go. However, Lynch had a stellar debut on NXT against Summer Rae, and this changed everything. Wow. She turned to Twitter to reference the match, and in a now deleted tweet, the WrestleMania main event has stated, A couple of weeks before this, they were going to let me go. I've been fighting to survive this place since before day one. I'll never be above what I had to do to stay alive. Mm. She's also discussed how pivotal Dusty Rhodes was in keeping Lynch employed with WWE, and thankfully they did, as it would have truly dropped the ball if they had fired For her. For sure, and number bro. one, John Cena. Yep, and in late we know about this one. Well, some of y'all may not know about this one. This is a very pivotal one, because he was almost out the door legit. Crazy to know. There could have been a world where John Cena was not a thing. 2002, WWE were getting set to release John Cena from his contract. Cena was blending into the background and he had uh -huh. zero character or presence on screen. And this is when Cena did one ingenious move which saved his entire yep. career. Speaking on the acclaimed Ruthless Aggression documentary, the WWE legend stated, I was told I would be getting my release in Christmas cuts because it just wasn't working. We travel as a community, so we're all on the same bus. So I heard a bunch of guys sitting at the back of the bus like Rikishi and Rey Mysterio kind of leading the charge and they were all freestyling. Mm -hmm. And I remember just being like, let's go try this. Just dove right in. And it was like it resonated with me. In two seconds, I made a small rap about a tuna fish, the jetway, the plane we're about to go on and the destination and then closed it with a comment about Stephanie. She said, would you guys like to do this on television? I said, absolutely. Just weeks later, Cena's rap persona mm -hmm. would debut on TV, and this wouldn't just be a gimmick that it would save Cena's skin. It, it would saved ultimately him. take him to the next <laughs> level crazy, in WWE. Bro. There you have it, folks. And it saved him so much that, uh, yeah, <laughs> ended up becoming a, uh, uh, I think that record is uh, a platinum selling record. His, uh, his John Cena album, the John Cena album, I believe it's a platinum record album i think he has sold over a million un units it's crazy he's selling more than your favorite rapper back then so his rapping persona definitely saved his career without a doubt and it's very interesting all it takes is that one thing and it can change your entire life so this was a very interesting video a lot of these i did not know uh, a lot of these individuals i didn't know they were on uh, the chopping block but it's it's it works out things are supposed to happen the way they're supposed to happen comment down below let me know some other videos you guys want me to check out appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel road to 150k i'm still getting the speedy youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all on the next one peace